Freebird. The most famous guitar solo of all time is Freebird. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the best of all time, although it may be. I think it's the most famous of all time because everybody in the whole world knows it who listens to music, even if they don't listen to rock and roll music, and even if they don't know who Leonard Skinner is. People yell, play Freebird, even if they don't even know what that means. What'd you say? Freebird. Really? Freebird. Well, I can't Freebird. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> Freebird was actually one of the first songs Leonard Skinner wrote. The lead guitarist, Alan Collins, had written the chord progression. It was just sitting there like a diamond in the rough, or a gem in the sand, or a guitar in a pile of basses, untouched. Why, you ask? Well, the lead singer, Ronnie Van Zant, kept saying he couldn't come up with a melody for the song because there were too many chords. The story goes that one day Alan started playing the chords again, years after writing them, and Ronnie said, okay, I got it. Apparently, he never actually wrote anything down with pen and paper. His motto was, if you can't remember it, it's not worth remembering. He wrote his entire vocal part, lyrics and all, right there in the rehearsal space. Imagine just, writing Freebird in five minutes. Well, Alan Collins remembered his chord progression that he wrote for years and years, and it's a good thing he played it on that rehearsal day. But this video is not about that particular chord progression that Ronnie Van Zant would affectionately refer to as the pretty part of the song. Actually, the chords that lie beneath the most famous guitar solo of all time are pretty simple. There's only three of them. The funny thing is, this song was on Leonard Skinner's first album, so when they were playing it, when they were nobody, playing it in the clubs, they only actually played the first half, the pretty part of Freebird. That was where the song ended. There was no guitar solo. Can you imagine hearing Freebird and then not hearing the guitar solo? Uh, I shudder to think. Apparently the iconic outro only came to be in order for Ronnie to rest his voice for a minute before rolling into another song. and. Well, if you tell a guitar player to fill some space, they will fill the space 100 times out of 100. A few years later, in the mid-70s, some band members had shuffled around, and the song had really become an undeniable, timeless work of guitar wizardry it still is today. And the live version had soared past the length of the original recorded version. You see what I did there? Soared. Like a bird. It's funny. Anyway, the live version soared past the album version length, often going on for another five minutes. Now this live version, which you can hear on Leonard Skinner's live album from 1976, One More From The Road, as the show is coming to a close and the band not having yet played Freebird, Ronnie Van Zant sheepishly said to the crowd, What song is it you wanna hear? Well, the crowd's response was a response you've probably shouted, at one point or another in your life. This guitar solo is a masterpiece, and while it's not the most difficult solo from passage to passage, being able to play this solo all the way through is what makes it so iconic and, from a guitar player's perspective, extremely difficult. The licks themselves, not so hard, but again, the endurance and accuracy of playing these slightly sophisticated blues licks. That is the epitome of rock and roll, and it is why I think this is the most famous guitar solo of all time. And by the way, this solo is doubled. It's two separate performances stacked on top of each other. It's what adds to the mojo, the allure, the mystique of the sound, the sonic excellence that protrudes into your ears and cuts like a fissure into your brain.
So the first thing I want to point out about this guitar solo is the fact that it's doubled lends itself to the character that you hear. And what I mean by that is Collins is playing the same guitar solo, one take stacked on top of the other, but I don't think this was anything more than like an improvisation that he learned. And the reason I say that is because all the licks are pretty perfect with one another, except for a few different parts. It's almost as if when he was doing the second take, he was following himself more or less like, oh, what did I do here? Oh yeah, this lick. And you can tell by some of the ways that the licks hit each other when they're playing against each other. And you can see this in guitar players like Randy Rhodes or Jake E. Lee. Really come to think of it, all of Ozzy Osbourne's guitar players who double their guitar solos, it adds this human element that is just so awesome and interesting, especially when it works out like this. And this part of the solo right here, That sounds crazy because he's playing this riff, but it's displaced by a certain measurement. So what I'm gonna do here is play a couple bars of this and then I'm gonna take the video clip of me playing and I'm going to delay it by a beat and I'm gonna stack it on top and you'll see a unison double which means the exact same notes happening at the exact same times and then I'm gonna delay the clip by a beat so one of them is starting a little bit earlier than the other and you'll hear what the effect is. So the reason that that magical thing happened is not necessarily because I think Collins planned it. I think he was like, Oh crap, it's this this lick is what I gotta play now. And he came in late, but he was right on the beat, and it was just late, and maybe he was listening to the first take, probably not, because it may have thrown him off. Uh, I actually had a lot of difficulty when I was recording this part, because I was like, why doesn't my recorded version sound like the studio version? And I did a lot of, you know, listening, ear training, and it came to me that he started this phrase a little bit earlier on his one of his takes, whether it was the first one or the second one, uh, who knows, but that is just such a cool aspect of this guitar solo, and it reveals itself in a few different other spots, but that's the most prominent. And now I'm just gonna kinda break down a couple of my favorite licks that you should steal from this guitar solo. I won't go note for note through the whole thing. A lot of people generally know this guitar solo. It's based a lot in the G minor pentatonic sound. <laughs> So that first position is the bread and butter of this whole solo. It's really where 90% of it is located. We move down a little bit to the first position and sometimes in the third position, so. So now that you have that sound in your head, this is the first lick that I'll show you and I tend to play it a couple t different ways. We have a hybrid picking version, which sounds like this. You know what lick that is, right? Bend on the 17th fret of the G string whole step. We're skipping a string and using our middle finger, and this is where the hybrid picking aspect comes in, so we have the pick and the hybrid finger. So we have the 15th fret of the E string, and then a hammer on from nowhere, so we're not picking the B string on the 18th fret, we're simply hammering on, and that is pulling off to 15 of the B string. So that is rinse and repeat for that lick. You can also try doing it with the pick. Skipping the string is a little difficult. Um, I tend to accidentally graze the B string a little bit. It kind of accomplishes the same effect and this solo honestly isn't the cleanest. Um, the rhythm is really precise, so that's really what it's all about. It's sort of Jimmy Page-y in that way. Uh, not the cleanest technically, but 
Uh, the rhythm's right there and the ideas are awesome. So something like this would be an alteration. Uh, that could be an option for you. The next lick that I'd like to show you is one of these. And that happens, of course, kind of right before we get going on the hyperspeed stuff. But I think this little jump here is nifty and not something you see a lot in the pentatonic uh, scale. We tend to go scalar like this. And people can get trapped in that sound. So a good way to break out of that is to learn this lick because it is skipping around. Again, the string skipping aspect. And you can play right here too. It's honestly a little easier. Maybe I should have learned it that way, but I still like sticking in this G minor pentatonic. Uh, that's kind of home base for me. So either way you play that one is nice. And maybe one more I'll show you here. This is like an homage to Hendrix, the ending lick, I would say to cap off the solo, which is like this. That is super cool. And this is another one that I hybrid pick. I don't know if he does. It's pretty easy when you get this down. So we're pulling off 18 of the E string, pulling down to 15. And right when we make that pull off, we immediately hit the bar. So the 15th fret of the B string and create this effect. And it's good to let them ring out at the same time. That's what accomplishes the effect. And you just speed that up. There you have it guys, Freebird in a nutshell, broken down the most famous guitar solo of all time, bar none. If you have a different opinion, please leave it in the comments section down below and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, 